Um, let's stand for the little picture. Dangerous. Well, thank you guys for having uh, me again. I appreciate the work that you put in as members of the San Bruno Park uh, Board of Education. We have several things we want to get through tonight. Our, our two primary aspects are going to be actions that needed to take place for this to happen, what would it look like, and here's how we would get there, review the behavioral audit, and um, and then discuss the superintendent 360, and the board gave direction to the superintendent to add dates for further process on the board goals. Those are the minutes. Oh, I know someone mentioned about the CSBA, about um, visiting the valuation Well, these were already previously approved at a board meeting. Oh, okay. So, okay, so looking at annual goal review, let's take a look at the 17 and 18, uh, I think you should have in your packet, the matrix. You mean, are you talking about this? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, no. I, that, that. This? Yes. You didn't, I didn't make it. No, it's the packet. You may do that? Yes. Okay. One of the purposes of doing this is in order for us to take a look at the word goals and see how they are synced with the LCAP, your strategic plan, along with your back uh, goal, uh, board plan, your board goals, superintendent goals, and looking at performance objectives for each one of those. So if you take a look at the top of it, well, I'll tell you the top of this before it gets here. You don't have a question. Can we also have the LCAP with us too? Uh, we, have their, we have the LCAP goals. Here? Mm -hmm. Right, 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 it's the line. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the importance of transitioning from having a strategic plan, per se, to having the LCAP serve as a strategic plan, and that since it has the ability to get community input, that there is definitely accountability to, to uh, the, the state with all the different goals that you would have there with the LCAP. So uh, I'll just kind of read through the LCAP goals. Uh, ensure all students develop career and, and uh, college and career ready. Knowledge and skills through full implementation of the common core standards. So that's one of the things that we'll be looking at. Uh, what's, what steps we've taken as a government's team to ensure that students are college and career ready and that the common core standards are being implemented in each of the classrooms. Goal two, attain, uh, attract and retain and develop highly, high quality teachers to ensure a positive learning environment for all students, all capitalized. I mean, this year that we're talking about every uh, student, not only the subgroups that are identified in the LCAP or any other uh, assessment data, but any, all students who are at, uh, attending your district should be ensured to have an access to all the various programs, which means you have properly uh, certificated teachers, sufficient materials, appropriate facilities, uh, with high quality teaching and student learning. And then your uh, next goal is to ensure all students are, I'm looking at goal, under goal four, all students are actively engaged and supported to very safe, culturally responsive and rigorous learning environment supported by empowering all students, all capitalized again, 
I mean, all parents, including those speaking a primary language other than English, to be actively engaged in their students' education and decision-making processes by providing timely information and educational opportunities to support and expand their role uh, in their students' education. You can see how the goals are aligned to the various other documents that you have in, in place, keeping in mind, as I said, that the LCAP will serve as the strategic plan goal uh, in, in general. And obviously, a lot of those goals are, are intentionally aligned and are very similar, regardless of which of the various programs you look at. I can just ask, the, this one, this that you have been selling prepared this, right? The, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was, I mean, it does, those are you know, goals that we're in the LCAP, and it does look like that's a format that marries a, a lot of the, you know, yeah, Absolutely, and, and, and that was absolutely the intent of putting them all together in one document so that as a board, you'd be able to look at it and see, instead of rifling through six different plans and so on, you could see here how they all uh, are aligned with each other. And I would advise the board to continue doing that anytime you look at plans or, or develop strategies along the way. Any questions about that process along the way? I just want, this is a review we've done over this a few times in the past, but I wanted to make sure we use this as a foundation for our conversation tonight. Is this the time for us to, to make amendments to this, or is this like a ready? Uh, no, those were last year. Those were last That's year's, last year's. So, right. And so some of them will change based upon the board's direction and, and, and your governance team structure as to, and also your LCAP. Because as you go through your annual re, uh, revision of it, there may be some things that rise from parents or other community members that become a parent that need, they need to be a part of the LCAP along the way and, and it's not necessarily in the current goals that it's possible to be placed as additional goals along the way. So that being said, um, we're looking at goals that we're looking at 2B, goals and actions, long range goals, strategic goals and activity. Okay, so here's a new handout. So what I did is I went back through uh, the um, matrix from the last year and uh, looked at uh, the high level goals for uh, this year and then developed some superintendent goals. So the first goal being student achievement, uh, our long range goal is that, uh, and this is pretty much established, but I articulated it pretty, cl I, I believe clearly here. The San Bruno Park School District will improve the performance of all students by providing a system of curriculum instruction and student and program assessment that clearly defines the basic skills and achievement expectations for the 21st century on standards of excellence and by helping students achieve those results. So really focusing on those systems, the practices, the programs, the monitoring piece that needs to be in place in order for us to improve student achievement. So underneath that for this year, what I would like to accomplish uh, in, in the work is that I will lead the development of a clear vision for instructional leadership and instructional practice. And I will provide uh, leadership design to improve student performance and promote academic improvement in the schools within the district. Uh, and to do that, there's, there's a couple of things that I think are high priorities for us. One is that we need to be very clear about developing what I call the portrait of the graduate, which is what are those educational outcomes for students once they leave San Bruno Park that will help propel them to high school and beyond. So this will be the foundation for the strategic planning and educational programming priorities as we move forward. Um, and I've done some research on, on how to do this and have secured funding to do this, uh, this project. So this portrait of a graduate is what many high performing school districts are doing across the state and the nation. It really clearly defines who we are and what we're about. And so it will help us to set a path and to stay the course. Can you elaborate a little bit more on your research and where you secured funding for this? So I secured funding through a grant from the uh, San Bruno Education Foundation uh, through Google. And the research that I did was through my superintendent leadership group and some of the superintendents uh, across the state and in the, um, in the Bay Area. And I asked them what are they doing really to, to define that strategic vision around teaching and learning. And uh, so they suggested this, um, that, that 
this might be an approach to do, and I researched and talked with a couple of agencies and, um, and bring this forward as my, my proposal for how I'm gonna handle this. Um, <coughs> so this is in lieu of the strategic planning that we've done that's sort of kind of all over the place. It's really focusing on the educational programming. The second piece is really around the student data and progress monitoring piece that we launched this year. This is that developing the baseline student profile to really gauge the future student progress and achievement. So this is the piece around the um, eliminate, the REN star, the data zone, and helping us to monitor students and identify students as they start to slip to see what we need to do in order to make sure that they are on track for, um, for making the benchmarks that we have. And so we'll be putting that in place and rolling that out this year. And then the last piece is, is, is taking a look at our uh, LCAP process, and so leading a collaborative process to update the district's LCAP. And these call three of these kind of line up together around improving student performance and having a very clear vision about the work that we do as a school district. <clears throat> so I'd like to first start, Stella, by this I'm assuming you got from my research with contacting CSBA, and they said this format to when I had reached out to CSBA to look at a new way of um, doing evaluation with superintendents, another tool. This looks a little familiar um, to that document, and I kind of was hoping that that's something that we were going to discuss tonight to um, provide the board with that example. So I'm glad that you're using this new format. Um, and then my concern with, well, no, my concern is with having all community stakeholder input during the LCAP process. I'd like to know, Stella, what are your plans in reaching out to the community of need, more specifically students from that are um, uh, English language learner, from our English language learner population, and the other population of um, the socially economic disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what level of parent involvement are we going to seek and how we're going to do that different, see how, how's that going to be done differently this year? Because last year I was really a little disillusioned with that lack of input at the table. So. Yeah, you know, we had, if you look at the, um, the goals from last year, you know, there was a goal written on uh, parent engagement in the LCAP development. And so last year we had a uh, community response. We had 333 parents who responded to the survey. We had 93 teachers respond and 850 students respond to the input survey. Um, you know, and of course the amount of the amount of responses that we got varied from school site to school site. And so, um, you know, part of that is uh, the work under the uh, superintendent's advisory committee will be meeting um, next week, I believe is their first meeting. And we are having them come up with some ideas for how we can improve uh, the response rate and having, because they are the folks at the school sites who will you know, ultimately be responsible for supporting the data collection at their school sites. So some of the ideas that we have are some uh, focus groups at you know, particular schools where we didn't have a high number response, working with the principal to figure out what you know, they can do to increase the response rate at their school sites. Um, so there are a variety of different things. I don't have the exact response here because uh, it is a collaborative process that I engage others into providing the, um, the input on what works best for their particular communities. And the board may have also have some ideas as well that that could, that could you know, help along the way because that's one of the things when you're looking at developing your LCAP is that, it, that the governance team should take the lead in terms of what's the best ways of, of making sure you get the appropriate uh, feedback from the community members and so on. I think, um, just to jump in here, I think something, when, when's the LCAP, June? Well, it's finished in early May, okay. and so there's two input process. There's a there's one in November, December, mm -hmm. and then once the strategies have been identified, then we take it back out again and we get input on those strategies. I just think, um, say I've got two young kids, and a lot of it comes down to advertising. So I mean, we're talking May, June timelines. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we could draw a timeline and just say, okay, here's our modified piece of drawing. Sure, here. absolutely. But, you know, here's, here's, that was a late, <laughs> that was a bad um, Here we are in what, late October, mm -hmm. but 
however we can advertise along the way, just so people know when the LCAP is, why not do it, right? I mean, every month we should have, hey, by the way, we have an LCAP coming up in June, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how the district currently does it. I don't know. That's not a bad idea. idea. But advertising is cheap, relatively. I mean, you want parents to get there. And you can talk about child care and all that other good stuff to entice people to come. So, so I reference those two populations of our community. That has been a huge concern of mine since I got on this board. And I still feel that we lack getting their input. So Stella, are you saying that the only level of input that we're getting from that, those two populations are from surveys? No, I didn't say that. I said that the, um, so the Superintendent's Advisory Committee is a collaborative group of stakeholders who come together and they identify strategy that they're going to be utilizing for their particular communities. So for instance, at, one, at Bel Air, for example, uh, we will be going to the principal and identifying what are some strategies that she's going to engage to get the parents to come in, whether it's uh, focus groups, whether it's through her cafecitos, whether she's going to, how she's going to go about doing that. So I set targets for each of the principals to engage with the parents to get feedback. And so we help to develop those protocols to get that input, whether we do it through interviews or whether we do it through a survey that's available. And we, we did the survey in multiple languages last year. Sometimes it, it takes, you know, small one-on-one -on -one conversations with parents to see how they feel. So, you know, um, we're not going to get 100% participation. That's, you know, that's uh, uh, challenging to get participation on surveys because people get a lot of surveys. So we're trying to make sure that our survey is not so long that parents can't complete it, but that it's, it's going to give us the right kind of information that we need in order to be able to make informed decisions. And then, um, and so every school is a little bit different. Some schools have high response rates to surveys, some schools do not. So we're targeting those schools that don't have high response rates to figure out what can we do to, uh, to engage with the families. And so working with the PTA, working with the school site council, with the principals at those school sites to ensure that we are, have, have the opportunity to go in and meet with the parents. Okay, I feel you're not answering my question. I'm so sorry, but um, they're saying in order from these two demographics of community, in our com in here in San Bruno, in our district. You're telling me that the only way that you are seeking input from them is through one-on-one, -on -one, cafecitos, um, meetings, and so you're, so you're telling, so what are you saying that we're, that their input is being forwarded to you through the principals at the school? I'm talking about them coming to the meetings, and I want to know how do you plan, unless if you haven't already, um, I like to use the word handpick because I know that we, our superintendents usually handpick the people that sit at these committees. But at, for the LCAPs and for DLACs, um, we need these demographics represented at these committees. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that last year. So, so I can give you one suggestion on, on how it could be done uh, in terms of the DLAC. And that is to have an LCAP meeting at your DLAC. Mm -hmm. And so instead of inviting the DLACs to come, you have a DLAC meeting, and so Joint part of your DLAC meeting, meeting is yeah. going to be an LCAP meeting. Yeah. And so you have all representatives of the, the DLACs at the site, right. and then yeah. have, uh, this is our LCAP meeting, and so you go through the same process that you would go through at your general meetings at the school, mm -hmm. and you can do that with almost any population along the way if that's not being done. Yeah, we did have, we ran last year a uh, superintendent's advisory committee and DLAC using the same agenda, so we made sure we had input from both committees. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times during the development of the LCAP, we will run the same meeting with different groups of people, so we're getting that input yeah. from them because that's part yeah. of the responsibility yeah. sure. to do that. Mm -hmm. And one of the other okay. things that uh, some of our schools did is that when they were updating their school plans, mm -hmm. which they have to do every spring, is that they will also bring parents in and share the LCAP. So here's what's happening on the LCAP, and then you know, give us feedback on that, and let's talk about our school plan, because those kind of nest together. That's the school site planning? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. What, what my um, question was, and I appreciate strategic goal number one, where it talks about it is a SMART goal, mm -hmm. but um, in hearing Valerie Rogers um, mm -hmm. in our last meeting talk about Bel Air, mm -hmm. page 16, it was below 20% math proficiency for Bel Air. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think a, a seriously smart goal would be, okay, what should that percentage be? It's in our LCAP. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's already written in the LCAP, okay. what, those, what those targets are. All right, it'd just yeah. be good to see some of those. Okay, here's the main goal. Mm -hmm. Here's the giant goal for the superintendent. Mm -hmm. Boom, here's how it boils down to mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. site planning. Yeah. And in fact, to your point, Andy, one of the things that we want to happen, and I know just I've with this Dell on this, and she does this all the time, and that is ensuring that as you take a look at the matrix, and you have the district goals, you have the board goals, you have the superintendent goals, and then they become the principal yeah. goals along the way so that uh, there is some alignment and they're in sync and so that everybody is, is growing in the same direction, if you will, to, to your point. And then that's where the differentiation comes in because, to your point, that at some schools it should look different than it will be at another school based on what the data s says, what yeah. the uh, community input says, or, or, or options for community input. And the matrix does help. I think Kevin actually had, had yeah, it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And to give Stella credit, I know she's worked very hard getting mm -hmm. software and right. looking at expectations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But uh, I just think in looking at Valerie's report, I'm like, well, this is a bunch of great data, but mm -hmm. that was kind of it. it didn't, we didn't discuss mm -hmm. goals or we didn't. Okay. Um, I think it just kind of fell flat, and I don't know if it was just me, but I, I didn't know uh, what the next step was. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. I think to address that point, knowing now the data is, is, is uh, brought out at a different timeline than an LCAP. Yeah. So then, as this new LCAP is being developed in November and December, mm -hmm. this would be brought to show what the results have been and what needs to be addressed in refining the goals going forward. Because yeah. the LCAP yeah. is a living document, it's yeah. not a static document. Yeah. And so it's going to go with constant uh, reiterations and based on the data that's coming in. I think having the illuminate and tracking, mm -hmm. I have uh, a pulse in this case of what's going on at the various students, and that provides a nimble way of approaching curricular changes in a timely fashion that will have a greater impact on the students. So what we what we did is when the SAC, when the Superintendent Advisory Committee gets together and starts to look at the data at the first meeting is that we will have those data with a target mm -hmm. to show where we are in relationship to the target. And so based on that, right. then the Superintendent's Advisory Committee is going to identify the, the goals and the targets for next year. And are the targets too high? What do we need to do to get there? You know, how do we invest? And so, you know, this is really the first year that we're investing into our, our program. I've been on just, yeah. you know, less than 16 mm -hmm. months as a superintendent. And so a lot of what you're seeing is residual from previous administrations. Mm -hmm. So, you know. The other thing I think that, that would be critical for this, though, too, is we, we're starting from scores that only start from you know, fourth graders on. Right. It's so much work and investment is happening, both like the video starting the Robo Guide, right. and then so much of you know, all the other programs like mm -hmm. Seals that are investing in the primary. Mm -hmm. you know, so how those kinds of indications even of where where things stand to be when they right. before they turn into test scores. Right. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's because I think there's a lot of work going through those, so mm -hmm. that ought to be you know a way to. And there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of the board we don't see, right? Uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't say that accusatory way. I say it's just at it, a high level we don't see all that data. But be, to be presented with Valerie Rogers' report, I was like, wow, this is a lot of data. We should do something with it. We should build something around it. But it sounds like staff's already working on. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, the fact that predicted it. Yes. Right. Yeah, yes. we predicted yeah. what the data revealed. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what you want to be able to do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what exactly. you want to be predicted, yeah. but that way, if it's and now that you have a year with the new superintendent, and you can see the predict predictive value of it, it allows you to revisit, to revise in midstream instead of waiting till the next test scores in order to see if it's still a predictive. You can look at it and say, well, we after a couple of years, you can, you can trust that the LCAP and where we are is going to predict that here's what the scores are going to be. There's something we need to do midway, three quarters of the way along the line to say, you know what, let's tweak it a little bit because- Like course correct. Correct, exactly, yes, exactly. thank you. Right. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's the word I'm looking for. And that's part of that, that's part of that system around the um, indicator B is, is making sure that we're, our principals are leading that data analysis work and are able to talk to us about what's happening 
classroom by classroom, grade level by grade level at their school sites in that course correction during the course of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm still stuck. I, um, so, so how many parents do we have uh, that you've invited? I don't have that data with me. I don't have that data with me. Okay, so um, are, am I, will I be seeing parents that represent those two demographic groups in the Abs Absolutely. Okay, yeah, so. Representation from uh, all of the demographic groups. Okay, so I just wanna know now, so if there's not, then how are we going to change that? So, because um, obviously I, we have I to ask someone to get off right. so we can invite someone in. Yeah, well. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about from the inviting okay. committee or are you okay. just talking about? Or the, the, her, the set. But, uh, but the SAT is just really, I'm going to assume, yes. I'm going to assume, are just the facilitators. No, they're, no. they're, they're an advisory group. But I'm saying that facilitators and ambassadors, which might, to they the go students. out into That's their right. communities and to their mm -hmm. constituents. No, yes. the, 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 the way that we've done here before is we've had, we've invited that, those population of community uh -huh. at the table, and they've been part of the decision-making process on the LCAP. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, okay, okay, then, 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 okay. That last year. So with your suggestion, I love your suggestion. I would love to see our DLAC and our LCAP have joint meetings. Mm -hmm. I don't see why we don't do that, because mm -hmm. then we can take care of that. Do you think there's a, um, an area where, where we can advertise that as a district? Yeah, so well, we, they, we, do, we do advertise okay. that. We have given that information out to our school sites and have recruited you know, individuals. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things about the superintendent's advisory committee and the recommendation from the county office is that we don't make a lot of significant changes to the to the <coughs> composition of the superintendent's advisory committee. The individuals that were on it last year were people that we inherited previous to my um, my um, Sorry, administration, so. and with the exception of. And I think we're kind of getting down into the weeds here because we're just okay. supposed to be setting goals. Right. Um, well, I'm, 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 I want to know how we're going to be moving forward with the goals. Another thing I want to bring up too is that I think um, to inform uh, now with success indicators 1B, I think we need to get parents involved with this. And I think I'll be speaking a little bit more on, on in regards to community engagement. Um, just, uh, you know, I think we need to be doing maybe some training workshops. Um, I know for DLAC, I've invited the county to come in um, in previous years to come and do workshops for DLAC members so that they are, so they are fully aware of what they're getting involved in and for them to fully understand their level of, their, well, understand their, their role um, and for them to be effective leaders in the DLAC. Um, so I don't know if, I know we've already had a DLAC meeting that I've missed, but I don't know how we came about to inviting those people to be part of it. I know that the protocol is that you need to have elections at your schools for the ELACs and therefore you, you delegate to, you, you assign, you ask someone to be, um, you know, the liaison, mm -hmm. um, you delegate that job to someone and they're the ones who are supposed to come to the DLAC meeting. And that protocol has always fallen by the wayside here in this district and that's something that I've always had concerns with with that certain protocol Sorry, to make sure that we have that level of representation from every ELAC at the DLAC. So I don't know if that was the protocol so for this year. So for this year, we did actually follow the protocol that you explained. Okay. And um, we had um, uh, we had a, a staff representation and a parent representation uh, from every school at the DLAC meeting. So uh, there are assigned individuals who are representing their school site, a parent and a staff member who attend the DLAC meetings. Um, but I think this is getting off track of what this mm -hmm. success indicator was for. Mm -hmm. This was how does the district and its employees, yeah. taken loosely, know how students are doing right. and right. correcting. Very good point. How yes. they're redirecting yes. right? Okay. Yeah. So right. I mean, I know that the, no. the other is important, but that's right. not right. this one. Right. Right. Okay. I'll talk more about parents. Okay. How about, uh, we move to the next yes. one? Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that uh, is um, kind of a burning topic around uh, attracting, retaining, and developing mm -hmm. highly qualified staff, there are many things that go into this, but a priority for me this year is around uh, updating the systems for evaluating certificate employee, certificate employee performance. And so um, one of the things that I'm working on right now is working with our associations to uh, develop a plan and present a plan regarding how we're going to update the t uh, current teacher evaluation system. So 
This is a long project. It could take us two, three years to get it done. But for this year, I want to get, we've got some, identif some folks identified and beginning to put a plan together in a timeline for how we're going to update the teacher evaluation system. Do you know what the last one was? Henry Ford? <laughs> Gerald Ford. Oh, I think Henry Ford. We made cars. Um, okay. <laughs> so updating the systems, can you speak a little bit about the systems? It's actually the the timelines are, are pretty much set. So it's the uh, so the the system for training staff on the instrument updating the instrument itself, determining whether we're going to have multiple multiple methods for teachers depending on there's where they fall in terms of tenure and performance. And then it would also include um, training of the administrators so that we can ensure that every administrator is benchmarked against whatever the standard for performance is mm -hmm. so we don't have variance in the system. So one of the things that I did in a previous life was I was part of the development of the teacher appraisal system in the state of Texas, and we uh, we actually calibrated all of our administrators uh, biannually to make sure that when somebody when, when someone was rated you know, proficient, that that met some. And so for us to improve our overall effectiveness in the district, we need to make sure that we're all clear. All of our administrators are clear on what it means to be proficient. Standards now, I'm yeah, sure. The standards have changed a bit. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Questions about that particular goal? Mm -hmm. Andy, would you? No, that was it. Okay. Okay. okay, so priority three was fiscal solvency. And so <laughs> our goal is to ensure the district can, uh, remains in and has long term financial, good financial fiscal health. And so uh, here, what I want to do is just want to keep the board informed about the updates of what we're doing to increase revenue for the district to support the programming and facility needs. So I'm going to be making a quarterly reports or have or bring quarterly reports to the board regarding uh, revenue uh, attainment and then what we're doing in terms of uh, addressing the recommendations that came out of the Budget Advisory Committee. What about, um, besides Getting more revenue for the district. What about lowering costs? That would be part of this, if that's yeah. When, lo when lowering costs, like lowering expenditures. So that's 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 a much bigger project to do because okay. we have to do an analysis right now. Let's focus on on in, on increasing revenue for those special projects and and focusing on the those uh, the recommendations of the budget advisory committee. So um, you know, we're digging ourselves out of a hole in some of our systems. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to spend a little bit more to get that system fixed, and then the cost will go down after you after you've completed that, you know, renovation. Andy, what did you mean by expenditures? Uh, what we spent. Right? <laughs> but just general it, it, specific area. Well, I was talking about service, and is, service and operating costs. My concern is the district staff. Okay, mm -hmm. what I'm saying, it could be a variety of things. I think there's the conversation, but it's more of that we talk about increasing revenue, which is great, but also at the same time looking at how we're spending money. Yeah. Well, we will have this year, you know, the, we're bringing back our budget committee, and so the budget committee is going to be taking a look at, you know, all of those, all of those things. The budget. Evaluating where, okay. and where we are yeah. and how those things, and so I'll, I'll bring that information back to the board. And we'll have comparable data, how fast we're seeing well, just how other districts are spending money, are we now? Yes, other districts are different than San Bernardino Park, so yeah. it's, you can't yeah. measure apples and oranges. I understand. Yeah. yeah. You can look at it from quarter to quarter. Or mm -hmm. so it, has to it has to be, to Andy's point, it has to be measured against something. Yeah. Just yeah. like yeah. Um, and I would benchmarking. Just, and I would look at it yeah. from just everything from your uh, 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 reserves to some of those types of things to say here was our reserve there now we've increased it or it's maintained the same looking at services and programs looking at uh, uh, are you deficit spending and are we now less deficit spending than we have done in the past are we no longer deficit spending so those are just ways of looking at here's some indicators in the past and here's how well we're doing or how 
or we need to make some changes because it's, it's showing that uh, if we continue down this path, mm -hmm. then it could lead us down another road. So typically, I would just look at it from a annual perspective and saying, here's where we were this time last year. Well, kind of like your budget that mm -hmm. you do in uh, or interims. interims along the way, and maybe as a board to more closely at when we do the interim uh, reports, get a sense of asking that, that's a great question to ask. You know, oh, so yeah. Yeah, how, mm -hmm. how are we doing compared to last year? Are we predicting where we're going to be at the end of the year? Uh, are we on board? Are we and looking at any areas or categories that you look at and think, hmm, uh, it would be just spending well on that. So I have a question about this. <coughs> so the, regarding the Budget Advisory Committee, um, with, the, with the Budget Advisory Committee uh, looking at the feasibility of hiring new district staff, because I have a concern that we're hiring, um, that the district is becoming, that the size of our district is becoming top administrative, administrative heavy. And which means that with seeing with this new recent director of technology services with the amount of money that we're gonna be paying this person who may not finish their um, bachelor's degree because in the job description we left it as um, in progress, which is a huge concern for me because if that's the precedent that we're setting here in the district that hey, you know, you can come here, you, you don't have to finish your degree, but we may hire you anyways and you're gonna make over $100,000 a year that's a concern because if we're going to continue on hiring new district staff at this at this rate of pay, mm -hmm. our dis we're not going to have we're not going to be able to give anyone any more raises here in the district with the staff that's already here. Okay, I think so I want to know if the budget advisory committee is going to be looking at the feasibility okay. of future new job hires. I think what you would be able to do to John's point, we look at comparing it to something. You can look at the size of a district mm -hmm. overall and say mm -hmm. administratively. We're looking at four districts. Right. For example, yes. we, yeah, we bring up um, Daly City and Pacific all the time for negotiations. Yeah. That, that would be. Yeah, exactly. You you know, look, 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 in fact, I would look at the same right. comparables because if you're using for comparables for salaries and you want to do right. the same thing for other you're, areas, you're as well. that makes sense. Oh, yeah. I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whenever I hire senior staff, yeah. I think it's, it's comparable data to John's point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just so we're not an outlier. What are you saying? Well, if you're. If you're we don't know where we are for gonna what when do we get top head? We don't know that you're saying, but we don't know that because we haven't compared ourselves to other districts. Right. Right. So you could do that and, and get a sense of because you may be lean or you may be top heavy, but you won't know unless and I think since you already have to your point, comparable districts for other things, then you can look at it and say, Well and also when you're looking at comparing, it's important to look at not only just the titles but the positions. Give you an example. Uh, a district may, two districts may have six district level administrators. Let's just say you've got your superintendent, you've got your three assistant student coordinators. One district may decide, I'm going to have a director of a technology. Another one may decide, no, we're not going to have that position because this person can do that. My business person is pretty good at that. We're going to have a, a, a uh, somebody who's going to do visual performing arts. We want to make sure it's visual performing arts. So both have six. They just distribute them differently, and that happens along the way. So when you're looking at it, you have to look at uh, district office in general, and say they have a. And, and in some districts, the structure is different as well. Some districts will say, "I'm going to have one superintendent, five directors." Another district will say, "I'm going to have a superintendent and two assistant supes," and they're going to do the works of it. So. But it gives you at least something to, to, to compare it with. And, and then you start looking at the salaries and saying, okay, the one that had the superintendent and five directors, it's uh, $700,000. The one who had the superintendent and two assistant soups, it's $600,000. And right. so you can look at it and say, okay, that, that's fair because the superintendent gets a chance. You can still compare it to the ratio. So right, absolutely. Nice. No, no, that's exactly yes. that. Yeah, yes. that's why you look at comparable districts size wise. And right. no, I agree 100%. I mean, you may break down a certain district. I'm sure even if a light district might not have similar uh, special ed students or EL students. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you're absolutely right, John. You also have scope of work. Yeah, you know, yeah, right, uh, right. Scope of work makes a big difference. At the end of the day, it's all billable hours. You got it, right? That's so right. If you're if you're billing the district uh, the employee, we we want to make sure it's value added. Yeah, um, I think you give Dr. Sam credit. She's worked a lot on job descriptions. Yeah, 
which is something we should look at in any right. any entity should yeah. have clear job descriptions. Absolutely, and that will help guide you in terms of what positions you need if, if you see a gap in those job descriptions mm -hmm. or where the overage is. Where or sometimes we have, you know, yeah. Or if, you're, or if you have the ability to hire somebody and they're going to bring so much value to the yeah. district, yeah. then that's something you don't want to, uh, a door you don't want to seal off. Right. Right. Yeah, well, on the other hand, there's, there's what you're um, after in your public health and stuff, too. It's like you want to really put a stress in this area. Are you going to stop that area? Or are you just kind of like hopes and dreams? And, Absolutely. You know, no, you're and right. Reports, you know, you, you have to align yeah. the resources you do. We call that, you know, you know, uh, triangulation, where you're taking a look at several different aspects of things and deciding, okay, based on district size, this uh, LCAP, salaries, and, and and student populations, this seems best for us as a district. Mm -hmm. It may not be the same for a Pacifica. It may not be the same for some other districts you compare to. But at least you're in the ballpark. You, you have you can rational. Well, the other thing in terms of stores in this district, when there was a downturn in the economy, mm -hmm. and where there was a downsizing in staff sure. in the district office, and there were complications where their one position, superintendent was doing two or three things at the same time and not being able to address. And so there's the other issue of marginal utility. I mean, you've got to get to that optimal sweet spot in terms of the efficiencies. And I think the other thing that's changed is the LCAP and the LCFF. Complexity of the amount of work and time and effort that goes into it is quite different than in the past. Sure. And to your point, in terms of utility, uh, I, I know a, 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 a district not too far from here who, you know, at one point the, the superintendent came from this area and they were able to do both jobs. But now they have a new superintendent. And this person doesn't have that skill set to do the same two job that the superintendent did, so it, it may go in a different direction. Anyway, I don't want to belabor right. the point. Yeah. So number four is community engagement. So um, by May 15th, so this is really around building the culture of we that engages parents, staff, and community partners in supporting student success. We have a lot of great support in our district. And um, so just uh, working on uh, this year by May 15th to provide the board with a report um, on the efforts to engage the community in the transformation work around the schools with tomorrow inside. Um, and so at this at here then would be to uh, ensure that the internal and parent communities are provided with the opportunities for input and feedback around the annual survey, the LCAP, the portrait of the graduate, a calendar development, and those sorts of things. And then implement, uh, lead efforts to implement communication strategy, update the website, social media for families in the broader community. Uh, for example, the, those website and social media and then to provide updates about the district to local groups and to foster community understanding of what this vision for Schools with Tomorrow Inside is. So um, those are my recommendations around community engagement. Stella, with the vision for Schools with Tomorrow Inside, I know that you and I have received emails from parents regarding curricula. Mm -hmm. So um, how are we going to explain that and educate the community, the parents? about what the curriculum is going to look like in schools with Jamal inside because that's really all been about buildings up until now. Um, mm -hmm. The parents mm -hmm. that have emailed us mm -hmm. have some good points. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's all about the parents mm -hmm. because priority one and priority four go up hand in hand for me um, and should for the board, to be honest with you. Um, we need to do workshops. We need to do downtown hall meetings. Uh, we need to um, educate our community. We need to educate our parents. Because if we don't educate our parents, we're not gonna, we're not going to achieve student um, success. So, <clears throat> with that being said, um, as I mentioned before, in regards to um, having the county come out and provide training for our DLAC representative, we that's something that we usually do and have in November. Um, and I uh, had a question about the ELACs at our individual schools. Did they have elections? No, that's, uh, I have to get that information from okay, you because I did ask about that. And okay, and so I'd like for you to provide that to the board. I'd like to see minutes from the elections and to see who the designated person is that was going to be attending the DLAC. Um, and then also I do feel that we need to 
in terms of the... I want to see minutes about their elections on who their elect representative is. And I'm assuming they have sign-ins for mm -hmm. when they show up. Mm -hmm. Well, so I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm asking for that information from the superintendent. So um, I'd like to see a um, little bit more um, community outreach. Um, I know that in my past experiences with the PTA, at the countywide level, we had a philosophy that if our parents weren't going to come to us for trainings, we were going to come to them. So I feel that if we need to go to a particular school mm -hmm. where the community, out of the community input from those um, demographics I mentioned earlier. And last year we actually went out to all of our Title I schools and did, did the uh, input sessions. Did we have LCAP meetings there? We didn't have an LCAP meeting, we had a parent input session. So it was around exactly what we would present at a SAC meeting. It was the same presentation to the parents, we updated them, provided <laughs> an opportunity to give input. And then when we when we went back, we shared with them what our uh, plan was and got their input regarding the plan. You, you actually just gave me a good idea. Um, I'd like to see from you, Stella, exactly the level of effort that you put into into getting into um, having the community support the bond and the reasons why we need to do the bond and why we had to close the schools and with your schools of tomorrow on the side. Um, I'd like to see. No, 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 to explain to the parents what the curriculum is going to look is looking is what it is because a lot of parents are having questions about the curriculum. Um, is it I the common core curriculum? It's just the curriculum of what the school for tomorrow inside curriculum. Is going oh, to look okay, like. school for like tomorrow. Said, got, it, got, it, got, it. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I was going to finish, but got it, okay. got it, got it. Okay. I, I was no, going that makes sense. My point. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and so I really think that we need to do a, a greater, um, just more community mm -hmm. level of community outreach. And, um, I, and I think, I think that's, a, that's a really good point because once we finish the portrait of the graduate, that will be the foundation of the road show regarding the schools right tomorrow on site. Because those couple nicely together and then we'll, we'll dovetail into the, um, the Common Core and you know our plan around STEM, STEAM, dual language, whatever comes out of that portrait of the graduate. Um, I guess one suggest just in, in, in the indicator for it would be just a, instead of um, Provide opportunities for input, just a little bit more driver language. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a, um, because I think that's have presenting an opportunity for input is like actively passive mm -hmm. in a sense. The way it's just you know, mm -hmm. the way, mm -hmm. but I think it's driving the the convers you know the mm -hmm. driving those opportunities is a little bit mm -hmm. uh, different. I think you put the word strategic in there, strategic mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I think it just goes beyond just. Interacting, but also providing resources to live in the digital age. For example, there are apps that specifically address the next generation science centers, as well as Common Core that provide the K through 12 level. So the parent or somebody needs the information, you can download it for Android or iPhone, and you get a pretty detailed you know, uh, oversight and how that dovetails with the LCAP within the district, as well as discussions. That there's going to be a level of homework that has to be done that to make these interactions very productive and give uh, stakeholder input. Since we're on the topic of apps and technology and documents, um, and I'm not trying to write this in here, but the idea is that, you know, Jennifer and I talked a lot about translation of the district newsletter. I'm curious what other California or Bay Area schools translate what level of documents. And <coughs> We start to look into to say what is the standard of care of translation of documents um, based on your population demographics. How can we path forward over a number of, of months or years um, reach the goals? And be the uh, is that Ed code? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't even need to take down that path because it's Ed code. It's All right. a lot. But we need to I mean, translate. But but have we done it? Not one hundred percent. And I'm not, I'm just sure. throwing this yeah. out here. No, I think this is, I think this is, yeah. 
because I think you know we've talked about that uh, as as something that is definitely should be a goal. Yeah. And I know I know we there's been some improvement from the beginning mm -hmm. of the year based upon uh, some of the documents that I've seen personally. But yeah. I don't know to your point. I don't know what the whole pie yeah. looks like. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. San Francisco translates with every every language. Right. Right. They also have a whole staff of interpreters and translators. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of very hard Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the budget. budget. Yeah. I had a discussion about the, the building the culture of we. Um, when I hear that, I, I I mean, it sounds good and it looks good mm -hmm. on black and white, mm -hmm. but for me, I, I don't see how that's going to apply to support parents and educate the parents of um, the demographics that I mentioned earlier. English language learner parents, parents who are in the demographics of um, the socially um, economically disadvantaged. Um, I, 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 think, I feel it's the district's responsibility to bring the parent in and I think it's not about parent-teacher conferences. That's when the teachers are telling the parents, hey, you know what? Child not being in the means of expectation, and just, I just think that we need to do more to support those parents. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what that's going to look like, and I like to see how we as a district can improve in that area because we need to improve in that area. Mm -hmm. As Andy mentioned, the, the test results just came out, so it's a strong indicator that we're not being successful mm -hmm. with those with that demographic of our population. So. I don't see that laid out here. I want to see, I want to know what we're going to do differently. But in establishing the goal, part of that would be giving an opportunity to, mm -hmm. to flesh it out. Mm -hmm. right. it's, it's a long range goal for us. So well, this year, it, really, it, I'm going to have to focus on I want specifics. Yeah. I want but, to hear. But you're talking about the long range goal. <coughs> and I'm saying that part of delivering that is, is fleshing out what it was. It's right. not, Looking at the different approaches, especially especially when parents are socioeconomically uh, strained in terms of economically, they're working two or three jobs. They're there may be multiple families in the same household. So one of the things you can do, but that doesn't one thing you can do not, is I'm sorry, the, Eric, I'm sorry, I have to respond to that. But that doesn't. Cause I know you've mentioned this before, and I just got to tell you, it, it gets under my skin, Henry. Just because these families have two or three or four jobs, you know. Um, and they haven't maybe had the same opportunities that you've had for you. them. But, what I, but I mean, that doesn't mean that they don't care about their child, Henry. I didn't say that. I, 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 find didn't, it I don't so think you said that. So let me take you back for well, a moment to what we had talked about. So we I want to know how we're going to do that differently because I'm not hearing that tonight. Well, and for starters, yeah. we went to a long age goal and put in build a culture of we that engages. Mm -hmm. And the other document you put all in capital letters. I, I know that, but how? So, I want to know the how. That's what that's my problem. I want and to know I think the how is going to be as, as some of the indicators that she, she listed there, and because those indicators are how she's going to do it. If there's some other things that, and we talked a little bit about uh, with the LCAP going back out, bringing the DLAC, uh, getting your list of people how they were identified. Uh, so I think you have some hows of how it's going to get better in, in terms of that. But if you have other suggestions, and that's what we've talked about, is that you know the best part of communication is being able to identify what do you mean when you say this? Because communication and some of those words are always going to be challenging because yeah. you, you can put out, if, if I did a wide range spread of I sent a flyer to everybody, I'm going to feel like I communicated because every parent got it. But that well, may we'll not be, but, but well, that's, that's going to be assumptions, but that may not be what that parent needs, whether it be needing translation, whether it means mm -hmm. uh, it's an education ease, so even though I received it, I don't quite understand it. I'm not saying that from a language perspective, but you know, one of the things we talk about communication is what, what language do you use and, and what words do you use to convey with what uh, the receiver is going to hear and understand versus using education needs, because we can use some of the terms here, and as a late I, parent. I guess what, I'm, what I'm trying really to get from this meeting tonight is, and how we're gonna do this differently. We did have um, an organization that came in, and it was a parent ed program. It was called BK. Um, and we had a huge um, 
attendance we had uh, at Bel Air. And it spoke about ELAC. It spoke about ELAC. It spoke, it, it broke it down mm -hmm. to our parents and they had a better understanding of what their role is mm -hmm. in order to to be an a, a, a effective advocate for their child, to truly understand. But they're not here now. And um, they're not here now. We don't we no longer have mm -hmm. them. So do, do they provide I mean, some documents? Do they they have materials? Who, PK? Yeah, PK. We have PK scheduled for winter for February through May. <coughs> or not February through May, but starting in February. But at which schools? It's gonna be at uh, it's gonna be at Parkside and it's going to be for the rising sixth grade parents and okay. all of our schools are invited to that and plus parents at Parkside. Because okay. I know that um, what they needed to do a PK because it was the first year here, it was uh, suggested that they customize it to the elementary school level. But I think that if we can provide it at the schools, not all the schools I feel need it, um, but at the schools that really need that level of education to truly understand the mm -hmm. education system, because that's where we lose those parents because they don't understand. Okay. That, um, Is there an opportunity for the board to attend those meetings? Of course, yeah. of course, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, and so it sounds also, like opportunities it, from each school to come up with their plan. It, exactly, too, and PK may be something that others may have a different alternative. Oh, sure, right, exactly that. So, sounds like that is happening at least at one of the sites along the way. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, as a district, you start with one and see how it goes, and then you determine uh, 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 if you need to, if you can scale up or if those communities want that particular program. Good. Excellent. Thank you for the suggestion. All right, and the last goal is the uh, board priority around the high functioning governance team. So I left that one blank. I thought this would be an opportunity for us to have a discussion. I think we should just go into the governance handbook. I think if we're going to be talking about that, because we need to talk about the governance handbook. Hmm? Yeah. That, um, no, no, I yeah. understand, but I'm thinking that we should just, I mean, just go into the governance handbook to cover this part. What does the governor's handbook, what specifically are you looking at in the governor's handbook? Well, I know that we're not done looking at it because I remember that we were supposed to speak about, we were supposed to look at it at the last govern, the last retreat and we didn't. Mm -hmm. That's why I had said that we need to have another retreat so we can finish the governance handbook. And we'll, we'll go through that, but in terms of, you guys had already talked about what would a high functioning. Uh, what were some of the things you guys flushed out? I can yes. I can open it. All right. So, um, so, uh, what are the behaviors and attributes of a high functioning um, governance team? So, three people said always making decisions for children, um, constantly improving the governance team, trust uh, the community. Three people said that. Build upon our goals, updates to see the year through together. Um, all students would have the necessary support to be successful. Thinking outside the box to address challenges, issues, and or topics. Uh, for issues, we devote time at all levels to identify ways we can help to make this succeed. Uh, we listen to each other with respect and mindfulness. Uh, relate our actions, be able to relate our actions to anyone we community with trust and confidence in each other. Uh, opportunities will be afforded to all in equity. Value and respect all district staff. If needs arise, put a measure on the ballot. The community will support the, the district, so um, a successful bond measure. Uh, we work as a team. Uh, listen to all stakeholders, not just a few. Uh, we truly put students first, and we are accountable for our actions. Okay. Um, that actually was, I think you introduced that incorrectly, Stella. I think that was the question that Eric, you posed to mm -hmm. the board, right. asking us, Mm -hmm. If you can, right. you can restate your, the question. Basically, if, how, if you were wildly successful, what would it look what like? What would a like? successful government that's, look like? That, that's what it would look like. Right. It's not saying that that's what we agreed on. Right, so those are, things, that's not our those are things that came out of it. But you also want to have a success indicator. You want to be able to say as a government team. What does success look like? Right, you want to yeah. be able to say it, it looks like this. We are just how we operate as a successful government, wildly successful government team. Mm -hmm. So what would it look like? So there's decisions for children. So there's like eight or nine points, Stella, you brought up? Mm -hmm. 16. 16. Mm -hmm. 
and look at uh, the long-range goal of the board development, board development to support board unification and development, and then the strategic goal of improved board and superintendent communication. So that's something I just put down as a, as a suggestion. So before, before we came up with 16, Concepts, ideas. I had quite, I had quite a list. <laughs> There's no prize. I don't think that was true. <laughs> no, that's not true. Yeah. And I don't think it matters either. But yeah. I don't think it's true. I'm just, I'm just saying. I have. I'll just say. Really? So. <laughs> uh, can I add a few of those? Absolutely. It's one uh, of yours. I think um, being a conduit to the community, to the larger community, is very important. And I think that's really the core of when we make decisions that we take the community's input. Mm -hmm. But we don't close that door off. It's it, you could say it's all about the kids, but really there's a lot more stakeholders involved. Mm -hmm. So being mindful of that. And how do you plan the board from doing that? How do we plan the board? I, I'm more interested in the how, because we can say whatever we want to say, yeah. and it sounds good, but I want to know the how. I think it's up to the five of us. Okay, the well, start saying some ideas. We gotta be, gotta be open. Your phone's gonna be on. Check your email. Okay. Um, you guys can keep talking. Really <laughs> <laughs> we, we already talked about that. Meeting. Okay. Is this an important goal? I also say open to new ideas too. <laughs> Is this an important goal to have for Stella? Okay. Which one? Absolutely. Uh, Golf Party 86, high functioning yeah. governance team. Why? It's important. It's critical to the welfare of the students being educated and the staff that support that. It's really. It's Administration teacher to, to do when, when the board is not providing clear direction. Mm -hmm. so. John, what are you upset about that? I probably agree with clear direction. Okay. Because that's what we're actually talking about here. But it's more of like coming to a consensus that yeah. get our point across. Right. I think given the clear direction at the end, that's sort of the easy part. Mm -hmm. It's getting us to all come to that consensus mm -hmm. to go there. Okay. I don't think that's always that's. Obviously not that easy to do. Mm -hmm. How about you, Jennifer? What would it look like? What do you think? Um, Why is it important to be a high-functioning governance team? I'm going to stay quiet on that one. Okay. <coughs> I'll pass. Okay. I think uh, at the core of it, I think it's democracy. This is a public process. Um, I don't say the five of us have to agree about everything. That's not the point of this. We don't always have to agree with staff either. I agree. It's about that if you're democratically elected, people are counting on you to have some sort of logic to your decision making. Mm -hmm. And to be open to, as I mentioned earlier, be a conduit to the public. Mm -hmm. Should I change my mind? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned before, we're elected by the people, so we're here for the people. And um, therefore, we need to listen to the people and listen to our community. And when we have meetings, when we had a community come and tell us that regardless of what the superintendent is re um, recommending, you know, a community is telling us something different. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if they made it a point to attend a meeting to share with us their concerns, we really need to listen to them. We really do need to heed to their concern and really take that into consideration before we make any decision. Okay. So my question would be to listen, to heed, what they have to say in a democracy and being elected officials, you guys have one job, actually two jobs. One, set direction and policy, hire a superintendent. That's basically your role. That's it. That's your role. In terms of being elected representatives, 
whether you're in trustee areas or whatever the case may be, it's important to Andy's point that you're democratic in the sense that you do hear where the people uh, uh, would like for you to go. And as a representative of that community, your role is to come to a board meeting and be able to represent that group. But all you do is represent it. Once, once you have healthy, I'm going to repeat, healthy to conversations, there's time to have make a decision. And uh, oftentimes what will happen is because if people come to the board meeting and someone's taking their cause, which, which you can do, that's not an issue at all. But once you've come, had an overall conversation, it is time to make a decision. And people aren't always going to be happy with those decisions. And sometimes what people say is, they didn't even listen to me because you didn't get your way. It just meant that they listened, I was a part of an input session, and it should be a legitimate, authentic piece of the decision making. But see, I don't see it that way, Eric. I don't see it that the community comes and they share their concerns and their comments and they want us to support what they're saying. I don't see it as them coming and not getting their way. I don't see it like that. Well, if, if, if the board as a whole decides to go in a different direction, then they're not getting their way. Well, then the community may say that the board doesn't care about the community. But the board, the community has actions they can take. Right. The community can say, I, we're I going to recall, that's we're that's going that's to not elect, etc. There, There is an option for the community. But your and job- And there's an option when it comes to election time that those board members that don't take heed and listen to the community- Right, and, 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 and the community will speak. Right. They will speak. And I say that because it is important for you as a governance team to represent the, the, the district 100%, but they have given you the authority and the trust and the trust to make good decisions, even if it doesn't, they don't agree with it. Even if they don't agree with it, it's the responsibility of the board to be able to say, and uh, I've been on many boards, I've worked with many boards, and sometimes some, one of the board members is gonna be adamant that there's a community who doesn't feel that they're being heard. The decision may be that it's not gonna go in their favor at that point. What, what, what makes a highly successful team is when you go back and say, you know what, we made this decision, there was a big six, a group of community members who do not feel heard, what are we gonna do about it? Whether that means we're going to go back out and say, you know what, we heard you, but here are some, there are some things that we can't tell you, because you can't tell the community everything. I don't care who, who you think you are, you cannot. You have been chosen and elected to be the leaders of this district. And, it's just, and so as a result of that, being able to go back and say, hey, we heard you, we have to move in this direction, but here are some things that we could do to, to, to maybe... Uh, move and, 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 and just let you know we did hear you. Other times you're gonna have to say, you know what, after a healthy, healthy conversation, the board had to make a tough decision. That decision may have been closing a school. That decision may have been getting rid of a person. That decision may have been um, not implementing this program. That decision may have been, we're gonna follow the law and implement this program. But as a governance board, you guys have to be able to say, we, have the respect of each other, respect the, I'm not asking you to respect your, each other individually. I need you to respect the governance team. That's very difficult. I, I, I recognize that, but life is difficult. People have to make tough decisions, mm -hmm. and that's hard, because there are gonna be some decisions that you make that, that as a board, that, goodness gracious, I don't agree with that by any stretch of the imagination. But the board made the decision, I gotta go with it. I've gotta move forward. So again, I take you back, what would it look like if this is an important goal? Because maybe it's not something you put in her goals and you take a look at the next section when we look at effective governance. When we look at the handbook, and maybe that's the place where we have that conversation. But as a board, you guys are the leaders of your community and of your school district. 
and every four-year-old and every 65-year-old looking at you, the 65-year-old teachers who are administrators of the back end, but they're looking at you. And they want to see, in some cases, that you're a warrior. That you're a warrior for the cause. Nothing wrong with that. But there's a respectful way of treating each other that is important. And that's where I'm trying to get you guys to. To the point where you disagree. You can disagree vehemently. I would get personal, but my wife says she's uh, videotaping. I'm going to get to my wife, so I won't put her on, I won't put her on blast. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, so let's get there. Let's get there. So, uh, you know, do we need to have this as a goal? Yeah. Probably should be. Yeah. yeah. Should be. Absolutely. Okay. So let's 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 hammer it out. That's why we're here. That's why I have a goal. We move on to the W. Mm -hmm. Can I say something about this goal? I can't. I can't. Be? I need to keep it here for right now because we're going to talk a little bit about that piece of it. Should we put some bullet points in here? I mean. So, so looking at the strategic goal, is this a, the appropriate strategic goal or do we want to do something a little bit different based on what was just discussed? Well, pretty open-ended there. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be yeah. much more specific. Yeah. Oh, right. It could be, um, I think um, one of the things we didn't talk about is like the continuing education of your board, you know, so. Oh, oh, I love that. There we go. Yeah. Good, Andy. To yeah, facilitate just... the education. Yeah. Also, I think with some. And can we, you okay, Andy, if I put the education of the governance team? Yes. Does that mean it yes. be individually, collectively, independently, interdependently, independently? I think another thing that's important is that I've, I've only been here a year, but I'm trying to reach out to other board sort of trustees throughout the county. and. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> The brown, the brown act prohibits us from having this all the time at right. Starbucks, so we can't we can't flush out ideas. But the idea of um, seeing what other boards do, and that's that's an important thing. Because the brown act doesn't apply to you and them. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a good, yeah, it's a good opportunity to work through things. So how do you see that unfolding? It's got to be self. I think a lot of this has to be self-motivated, right? So, you know, you want to, you want to educate yourself, right? You want to be better in your role. Mm -hmm. So I think that you should want to. I guess self-improvement is not the right word, but something like that. But um, a lot of it's networking, as I mentioned, with Kevin about the finding other trustees throughout the county and saying, "What do you guys do mm -hmm. with this? What do you guys pay in insurance?" I'm curious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right. What about your English language learners? How, you, how are you guys doing with that? Mm -hmm. What sort of goals do you have? Um, I think finding educational opportunities, whether it's the California School Board Association meeting, Masters in Governance, having uh, board retreats, whether it's going to another board meeting, and observing, and yeah, that's a good So thing. those are all be things that are tangible things that you could do. I also to your think, point. I also think I want to add in here, fostering free thought, right? So the five of us are free thinking people, right? That's part of democracy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. free, to, free will. Mm -hmm. So I think allowing people to say, your opinion matters to, to us, but it might not be applicable in this case, but I back to respect things. Mm -hmm. So we do have to foster free will. You do want free thinkers as, you, as your leaders. Start off with something as basic as respect the decisions of the government team. Mm -hmm. Don't have to like it, but respect the decisions of the government team. John, help me here. You're, you're good with words. 
I just think you need to be, I think we need to be specific. I think we need to come up with specific examples. I don't know how you well, you know, the, you the, the, the problem, I'm, that's why I'm staying quiet, and I actually want to just stay out of this conversation, because <laughs> when you lose the trust from your colleagues and, the disres and, and you lose respect, mm -hmm. you can't get that back. That's with any relationship. And I'm sorry, I've extended the olive branch to a certain board member, and he cracked it, and he broke it in half. I'm not going down that route again. So that's difficult for me. So you guys can go ahead and keep on having this conversation. So I'll leave it up to you. I'm going to just stay quiet. Okay. I just wanted to put that out there for all you guys. <coughs> um, we still, the board goes on, and there still has to be agreements on how we're going to act. You guys can go ahead, Kevin, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that that's the, you can't, there's, there can't be a, a blanket, uh, you know. You know what, yes I can. Yes, no, I can. Can, the, yes, I can. The, I'm sorry, you guys can go ahead and district, decide on what you want to do. But go ahead. Here's where, where I would take this is we have to be able to invest ourselves, but still have it such that you can talk about the board did, the board mm -hmm. wants to, the board, it's, you know, it's, because mm -hmm. that's, that's where the district ends up the next day after the meeting. You took a direction and the board said, the board did, mm -hmm. or didn't do, or chose to, and, and get all the um, get all the the eye the eye stuff is going on when you're reflecting with each other on what you're hearing mm -hmm. and I heard this this is you know this you know, that that's the input to the decision but the output to it is something that we have to be able to talk about before not in the abstract in a in a bad way it's it's actually what this unit did what mm -hmm. this unit has decided to do. And that's you know that's where we start to be where you can trust each of us to say what the board did <laughs> because it doesn't matter who's saying it because you know what you you know and whether you agreed with every vote or whatever it's the, the district needs desperately needs that next day to know what its direction is correct and it's not made up of a lot of I or too bad I you know it's you know it we. We should be able to go out to any school and say, yeah, this is what the board did last night. This is what the board did last night. And it's not controversial, it's not tough, it's not, well, it's, it's what it is. It's like, it's like this I, is what I, it is. I agree, Kevin, I just, to bring up the thing of free will, is that it's okay to say, yes, the, 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 the majority of the board voted this way, and that's what we have to get on board. I think, especially with kids, they are like, they're looking up to us as leaders, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's not to lose sight of the fact of that, but, as a free walking human being in this country, I think that we should be able to say, yes, I did vote against this, but the board majority was. And there's and a way to do that. And to your point, I think. In a mannered way. way. Right. But and, yeah, and, right. And you're right. And, and he should be able to do that. Going. You know, he should be able to do that. But that needs to be followed up with. And so, since the board made this decision, I'm going to support the decision. Mm -hmm. you know? But you should have a right to say that, you know what? Uh, I did not agree with the vote. I made my point. The majority of the board decided to go a different direction. I'm going to support the, the decision of the board. And, and, and that way the person knows that, you know, in some cases there may be community members who advocate, that you're advocating for. And you can say, you know what, I brought it forward. It was not something that the board decided to move forward on. And so therefore we're going to move forward. Yeah, and, and I, I think if you look, in theory, I, I want to believe all this. I really do. Mm -hmm. it's just when you look at Teddy Roosevelt, Tammany Hall, New York, he was trying to be a moral figure when Tammany Hall was incredibly corrupt. That's right. I mean, he was right. not for the job. No. Right. Um, I'm not saying it relates to us. I'm just saying that it, <laughs> it does. It's a it's a good it's a good point to bring up. You know, you have to go story. It's about the moral conscience. You do. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to freeze you on this. I'm going to take you through the effective government scene and see if that helps us move forward. So the first thing I want you to do in your packet. Is for you to go back and read your oath of office. Do you want? Oh. 
I just had an extra one. Kevin, there's a lot of eyes in here. That's for new vision. I know. So you took an oath of office that you're going to go by the Constitution of the United States, etc. You all raised your hand and you talked about that I take this application freely and without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of which I am about to enter. So let's take a look at the duties in the handbook. This is basically from CSBA. I'm sorry, did you want to say something before we went to the next item? I, I directed them and at this particular point. I, I think we need to keep it here for now. Yeah, but after they'll have children. Okay. 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 And so take a look at the governance, what the definition is. When governing effectively, so that may help us kind of define when we're talking about what would a highly effective governance team look like. In order to govern responsibly, the board must act collectively and hopefully be guided by community interest and informed by recommendations of the superintendent and professional staff. Taking a look at the next paragraph there, where it talks about the dimensions, I direct you to the paragraph that begins with, in a school district. And it tells you what, by CSBA, you need to maintain a unity of purpose. That's the governance team. Agree on and govern within appropriate roles, create and sustain a positive governance culture, and create a supportive structure for effective governance. Questions about that page? Okay, moving on to page four. It basically talks about the unity of purpose and then it lists the mission, vision, and uh, core values of the district. page four, it lists the bullets, several things that defines uh, team unity of purpose. you to page five and here's the crux of what you're supposed to be doing based on CSBA citizen oversight of local government is the cornerstone of democracy in the United States the role of trustees who sit on locally elected school boards is to ensure school districts are responsive to the values beliefs and priorities of their communities the board fulfills this role by performing five major responsibilities these are setting direction, establishing an effective and efficient structure, providing support, assuring accountability, providing community leadership as advocates for all children, district, and public schools. Anything on page five? Page 
six, more explicitly the direct the uh, board responsibilities. Here's where I challenge you. When you are making decisions or having conversations, you should use these as your tenants. I'm not going to read all of them. There's way too many of them. But I will tell you the third one, which is we provide support through our behavior and actions by we ensure accountability to the public by and the last one we act as community leaders by all of them are important taking a look at page seven we get a chance There it talks about building, excuse me, meeting guidelines. Any questions on seven? Page eight. For the cost of visiting school. I like to change this um, to the language here. <coughs> page eight? Oh, I'm sorry, number nine. Number nine. Oh, actually eight. Um, currently, the morale is low in the district, so I don't know how, how do we evaluate that? How effective culture and trust and respect is going to lie in the district this, you know, this year and coming years. How do we evaluate? How do we. What, what uh, measure do we, do we have that says it's low? I don't know, maybe we should look to establish one. Do you do climate, climate uh, survey? Mm -hmm. okay. Are those captured year over year? Yes. yes. Yeah. We did a new survey last year. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so that would be, a, Jennifer, to your point, a way of being able to, to say that. Can we, can we look at some data on that? I mean, over like a 10 year period? We don't have the yep. survey. No. We don't have that. About five years. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
has instead of should have. Each board member has the opportunity to get to know each of these school sites. I'm, I'm okay with that, as long as we, we keep the rest of it okay. and inform yeah, so Okay, I'm going to do that. that. Okay. I would change it to each school board member should take the opportunity. No, I think as board members, we, should, we need to be doing it. To be well, yeah. that's what it's and, implying. And maybe at a future meeting, maybe we can start attending, Guys, doing, do doing school site visits, and then Thank reporting you. back. And you just ask your question again. John and Kevin, what do you guys think? Because that's how the board, the case should work as a governance team. You guys should be having this conversation yeah. and come to your own consensus as a group. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm about either the way it is or what is it might change. Or? I'm cool with each board member has the opportunity yeah. to get. Mm -hmm. I think just that wording there is not yeah. ideal. Okay. Okay. Anything else on page nine? Page 10. So just an example from the first bullet point here, where it's the tail end says, so for hearing complaint, right, it says, then we will direct that person to the staff member in the district, so the principal? Typically, yes. Right. Okay. Typically, that's that's the first line. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. And then if they're not satisfied with that meeting, then they're directed to the Got superintendent. Mm -hmm. And then if they feel that they need to have further investigation, they can file an informed consent. And if they're not satisfied with that, then they can move on to the state. And what typically happens is when they go to Stella, Stella will typically, I'm going to make an assumption mm -hmm. here, assign it to the right person. In other words, parents complaining about, I'll uh, use uh, special ed as a conversation, mm -hmm. goes to the principal and unhappy, Stella is typically going to take it and send it to Sir. her special ed people mm -hmm. to say, yeah. because this person has the most intimate, or and that person may send it to uh, the case carrier to say, you know, do we need another IP? Do we need whatever the case may be? Got a meeting and so on. So that's typically how it works. All righty. Looking at the next one, into the board of request for action. Page 11? Uh, page 10. 10. 10. I'm only 11. You're always a page ahead of That's usually the case. I'm going to go back. There is a typo here. Okay. Where? The word action. Last bullet, yeah. Action. The word action. Oh. I want to again remind you, the board of what Andy did earlier. That's your role. Is when something is going awry to bring it back, to check for understanding, and doing those types of things. Next one, page 11. First sentence, board members again should have. I think for me, I, it gives me the sense like, it gives me the sense that, I don't know, it just, it doesn't, it, does, it rubs me the wrong way, the fact that it says board members should have. Either we have it or we don't. So board members either have or has the opportunity to bring up new ideas or subjects of interest. So I'd like to see that change. Um, and then also another sentence that didn't sit right with me before at the, the previous board retreat was, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I don't know which one of the board members, I don't know, if they, I don't know who implemented this sentence, but it does not sit well with me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and should not be diluted by new projects or interests of individual individual board members. Mm -hmm. And it and it rubs me the wrong way because is this directly from CSBA? 
This is so no one here crafted that. It's just mm -hmm. directly out of the CSB uh, language. Well, that's that's fine, but we can customize it to our district. Absolutely, right. the board, they're, board they're, consensus. They're just they're just there. Right. They're just there to you know Guidelines. offer guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. the, I think what this this does have a purpose, mm -hmm. and the purpose I think part of it is to say that the district's vision, goals, and objectives are agreed upon and are at any given time you're. It has its own uh, cadence. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I think this is saying that you don't dilute what your what the plan is to do something. It, you know, it, mm -hmm. it should have it. It should stand on its own. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't hurt to talk about it in almost anything, right? You know, to bring up, but it doesn't dilute the action of the district, which is already what you've agreed to. It's like you have a commitment mm -hmm. to the whole organization is moving on something, and I think this is saying should not be diluted by the project interest of an individual board member. You can incorporate it at the right time. There's nothing that says that you can't, but it doesn't. But the direction of the district is already set up in certain things, and I think that's. But if we have an, a board member that is wants to see something on the agenda. Um, of course, I would only assume that a board member would have the knowledge and experience that this would be something that would be towards the district vision, the goals, or the objectives of the district. Intrinsically? Kind of, kind of I, like, would, uh, I would assume that yeah. the board member would know what the heck he would be talking about yeah. to get the point across so that the, as a board, you would be able to have that level of dialogue and discussion mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. at a future board meeting. So that's, that's, that's the one thing. But, and and I think saying not to have it on the agenda. No, I think what it's saying here, I think you're in two different places. Mm -hmm. Diluting basically means that you have this train running down the tracks and you're, you've got the goals and you're really assigned personnel, you've assigned resources to it. You don't want to, the board to, to keep derailing the superintendent where, okay, now I want you to go over here and, and taking away from some of the bigger picture items. And so being able to balance that, there are always going to be some time to pivot, but in terms of how often is that going to be? So diluting means if you are going down a path and you've agreed that we're going to do this and then someone else wants to take on a major project over here, that's diluting the services because now uh, the superintendent has to take resources away from these other things that are going on that path. Sometimes it's going to happen because there are going to be some things that occur that, yeah, this is the right thing to do. I, I'm a little torn on this because I think, one, I, don't, I never want to live in board authority. I think that we should be a governing body. I think we should have free will. We should have the ability to agendize topics. But this is a question to the four of you. In the past, has individual board members over the years tried to agendize all of our and school budget? take it on the agenda? Yes. Yes. This is why okay. this is such a hot topic this for, is, this okay. is, for this me. Is, this is the key point because, yes, because that's what happened. In but the has it been said, say, I want to agendize blah, blah, blah. And, it's, and the other consensus has been like, no, you can't agendize that. Is that the way it's been? Absolutely. That or it's been. And you're saying it politely. Or it's been met with friction. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, okay. so we, when that's happened, so here's my question. I'm going to see if I can reframe it in a sense that Andy wants to put something on the agenda. Right. Kevin says, no, that shouldn't go on the agenda. No, no, don't take my Kevin. And, and Kevin says, let's say Kevin's the president. And Kevin says, no, we're not putting it on the agenda. I'm going to bring it up. And because I, I believe in the talking about the elephant, uh, gorilla, whatever the heck you want to call it. What should happen is the board should say, Andy wants to put this on. Kevin says, I don't want to put it on. You guys determine if it goes on. Actually, I disagree with and, that. And so, so that's, that's, that's what the law, I mean, that's what CSB is saying. Whether you agree with it or not, I, I, it's saying that the board as a whole puts items on the agenda. Now, typically, if it's a well-oiled machine, no one's going to argue with it because there's that trust and faith and so on. But when there's not, then it gets to the point of not one person should be able to dictate what goes on. 
Exactly. Well, and that's and the point. one way or the other. Well, so I should not be able as a board member to say that it's going on. And as president, I should not be able to say it's not going on. So that's by civil deciding. You guys, as a group, says that, you know what, this is a worthy project, a worthy (laughs) topic. We agree, even if you have to vote. Even if you have to vote and say it's going to be three, two, four, one, whatever the case may be. But for that one person have that much authority one way or the other, this is saying that's not how it's supposed to work. Now, you you guys have an opportunity to... So then you go on. Eric, the next, the next sentence then. Uh, next sentence. But also. That's what I'm, that's what I'm this board, I'm sorry, Terry, but he's not allowing I'm the sorry, public comment. Okay, okay. To him. sorry. So, um, so the next sentence is um, the board as a whole makes a determination whether or not, what you just mentioned, right. of, um, or not items of individual interest are added to a future agenda. Right. That as well, I cannot agree to that. that that's because, what I'm talking about. Exactly. Well, that's, well, because of this happened on this board. And to be honest with you, I said it before, and I'll say it again, that if a, if an individual board member wants to put something on the agenda, mm-hmm. so be it. But then leave it to, as it says in here, as far as the pro- protocol down here, that then you have the board president and the superintendent work on that, right, to create the, doc, to the, create the agenda. Um, because if it's something, whether I agree with Henry or not, whatever it is, if it's something that he feels that we should have on the, a future agenda, so be it. So so let it be it. I, I, I will support it. I'm not going to sit there and be a fellow colleague and say, you know what, Henry? No, I don't want to hear it. I don't feel it's important. And have that, you know, I, I just, I, I think it you, limits you, our authority I, I, as I, board members. You have the authority to do that either way. Okay, but because, I don't want because, it. But see, it, I don't if, want it in black and white. But, I I'm saying, even if you mind. changed it, you have the authority to say, okay. I don't think it should be. But if the board's decision is that an individual has the opportunity to do that, then you still have an opportunity to respectfully say, I disagree with it, and it moves on. I'm giving you what CSBA says, and that's something you guys okay, are going to have to work out inter- internally to be able to do this. So and, I, and they're not going to budge on this one. I will so tell you, I they're going to be very that clear. We strike out that sentence, and then I'm proposing. And um, so can you read what exactly the sentence from the beginning? Um, well, it's and should not be deleted, and then it goes on to the next one where it says the, the board as a whole makes a determination of whether or not items of individual interest are added to a future agenda. I'd like to see that um, uh, out. And then as we move down to protocol, um, the board members, again, it's just to really, it's just saying it another way. The board members need to confer whether the item is within the purview of the board in order to place a new item on the future agenda. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah, I don't want to limit any member of this of, a, of any board member whether they can have an item on the agenda or not. So you leave it up <clears throat> as our board policy um, that you have board president and the, the superintendent work on that, and then see which meeting will be placed on that. And then get back That's to a that conversation for you guys to have. And then I'm have only them, giving and you the guidelines of uh, what CSBA says, your governing body. And then Eric, to go yeah. back to the um, to the board member who's making the request to have whatever X agenda item on the agenda and let them know, okay, well, maybe this might be a little busy, but maybe it's the next one. Mm-hmm. But we'll, your request will be heard. Okay. Eric, question for you. Hmm? I know CSBA has this, the language, correct? Mm-hmm. But what if what if districts with boards that are divided, typically, if you look dig into their board laws, uh, sorry, government handbook, what if typically do they adopt? So here's what happens in the situations: they get tighter, they don't get looser. The the, the, the board the has that because the language is the only thing they have to hold on to, so they get tighter. They're gonna they're going to go by the letter of the law of CSBA. Because what tends to happen if you don't do that, then you, you can get a situations where it's, it's much more chaotic mm-hmm. along the way. So those, and most importantly, goodness, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. You guys have to check each other. You have to check each other. Very true. Because if this is what you were going by in the past, or the other way it was going in the past, as a governance board, if some, if, if as a team you didn't like it, 
as a board, you guys have to be tight enough to say, you know what, we don't agree with that, and so we're going to vote it down. And, and here's, here's where it gets tricky, is imagine if all of the fellow trustees were in their 80s, right? Careful, man, I'm getting close. <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful, I'm but sensitive. Here's, but here's my point, right? Imagine all the trustees are in their 80s, mm -hmm. name recognition gets you in every time, mm -hmm. they, they fought a little <laughs> more too. Not with me. Hold on, so the point all is, right, Chris. I know where you're going. Said, you have one new trustee that gets in there, has very progressive ideas, language ideas, uh, robotics. <sighs> Regardless, they, they bring new ideas. The rest of the district is like, my God, we need new ideas. No, but the majority says, we can't put anything else on the agenda. I'm just being devil's advocate here. Yeah. It's that's something to consider. That's exactly the point. Yeah. Right. That's exactly, exactly. the point. Exactly, and that, and that can happen. That's exactly now, what happened. And, yeah. and I will go conversely. I'm sorry, Henry. How can you say it's Hold not it. true come, when come. you've done it to yeah, us? Hold on. And conversely, no, he said something. Let him finish his point, Eric. He did. Because I no, but he said it underneath mm -hmm. his breath. No, I want I want him to finish the conversation. He said, "Isn't that true?" That's what that's what he said. So I, I just told but him. But he's not being honest. Well, that's opinions. But, but, really? but, but, Do you want but, me to share with you an example? Oh, I've got a lot of examples. Uh, excuse me. Uh, again, go back to our protocol. Who we are wow. as adults. I don't believe you, this. You, Andy. So let me tell you what happens conversely. Wow. You also have board members who come in, who have agendas in which they just put everything on agenda items because they are strongly believing in. I have this axe to grind, and I'm going to put every board meeting that person. So it goes both ways. So yeah, but as a group, once you become widely a widely successful board, then you can have those conversations and some of those hurt feelings can at least be placed in the backdrop while we making the while we're making decisions. I would like to think to John's point that that and to Jennifer's point that most of the things that people are going to ask you can directly tie to one of the goals mm -hmm. along the way, but in that you can have a, a, a professional conversation about that as a governance team. But what this basically does, it says, it just protects the purity of the process. Does that mean it's right or wrong? Because it's a good no statement. Process that's, that's, there's, there's no purity to the process here. Because when you hinder and keep a board member from asking to put something on the agenda and they and the board president at that, whoever the board president is at that time, to say no. I mean, I don't feel that we need a consensus. We, we don't. Was there a rational given? I'm going into ancient history here, but. Okay. Was, there, was there a rationale? I'm ducking. Honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm ducking. Is what you know. Hold, ducking. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I should probably leave the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I got to use the rest of it anyway. So. You know what? Honestly, there, there should have been no rationale for not allowing a board member to put something on the. There should be no rationale. And, and you know that I think, from my perspective, wasn't here, didn't live it. That's why we're having these meetings. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we're having these meetings is because. If you don't have whatever consensus or whatever rules are going to be, people can make them up. People can make them up. So you better, better be very clear. Otherwise, it will be made up. Because every one of you, I will tell you, will govern differently when you're president. Every one of you will. Not one of you will be the same. I've lived this life way too many times. You, you all will be different. So, so you put rules in it so that that variance of styles. Eric. Doesn't doesn't hinder the, the work of the board in general. You're, you're, and, and you're right, but we shouldn't hinder one another. We shouldn't not allow. But the damage has been done. Yes, yeah, so that's so, why we need this. This this is allowing the damage to continue. I don't know if that. I yes. No. I John, agree. Please, that's, that's, wait, this, 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 is, talking this is very necessary to prevent what happened in the past. So so I'm proposing that we strike out the board as a whole, make the determination or whether of whether or not items of individual interest are added to a future agenda. And then under protocol, because the same same thing, just differently, board members need to concur whether the item is within the purview of the board in order to place a new item on a future agenda. One of, I, the, one oh. of the safeguards for this, where I would say this is, is that the board is always stronger when not. The board president is trying to intuit where things are. Where, where, where were things at last meeting? You know, it's the 
time is going to be, or we have a calendar, whatever, all that stuff going on. But when we're the board, we're actually setting up what's the business that we're looking at. In mm -hmm. the next. So when we say what's like new business or something, or then um, actually Stella put it into the recent you know, in the template for businesses, mm -hmm. new topics. Mm -hmm. That's when the group. That's when the board is. There's power in that. There's power in being the board at that time to to talk about it and then decide. You know, but why can't we as board members give each other the power to allow each other the opportunity to have items on the agenda? Because I mean, come on, Kevin. Because I mean, I'm sorry, but I feel like you're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. And, 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 and I am talking about at a board meeting. I'm not talking about in between meetings. That's a whole different conversation. Because there are times when, when there can be a perception, too, that, that you're going down to th things that are not really what the, the board acting at the district level doesn't solve this problem. This is something that needs to be solved at the at school site, at the school site council. Things that are not, you know, it needs to happen from since. Our particular students issue that are, they're not, you know, um, the purview of the board, not the purview of the board. I mean, okay, that's that's we, a chance for us let, to let check. Let me put an example out here for you guys. So two meetings ago, I asked Stella, let's put bullying on the, on the agenda. It didn't happen. So I, I left it alone um, because I felt having Parkside um, changes, updates, was more important um, for the board to hear about what happened at Parkside. So now I've asked again, of bullying. So when Stella and I meet, we're going to have that conversation. Um, so are you saying that my request of the superintendent to have a conversation about bullying in our district, are you saying that that's not something that you as a board member don't want to hear about? Or what is no, I'm like saying no, but, 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 there's only one, but there's only one place for that to happen in public. That's at the board exactly. meeting. And so exactly. you have no. So I the chemist. Want to know. If you so said, I want to talk about bullying. No, so the, the chemist. Wait. Meeting, right. It, it's right. You talk about it as, as, a, as, a, as a district to yes. say. So it's not you and yes. Stella. It's not you exactly. and Stella. But, that's what it's, it's right. preventing him coming to Stella, you going to Stella, I want this on, you going to Stella, I want this on. It's basically saying, here is a, a place for the agenda item. Right. I want to have bullying. Big topic. Right. I, I would I would think that there would be nobody here who would say, you know what? Dang, that's, yeah, I think that needs to be well, there, or, or, or at least three, or at least three, or at least three of the five. But being able to do it in that meeting, and having the dialogue behind it, I think it's it's better because what I'm hearing, to be frank with you, is the secretiveness of it. You're being secretive because if you're having a meeting just because you're president, now he's. The president next time he's having meetings and putting things on the agenda, and then on his turn he's putting, and you guys don't even know about it. You don't even know that it's going on to be on the agenda. You should have the conversation, and that what it does is two things. One, when you have the conversation, let's say bullying is it. Hey, I want to put bullying on the on for uh, next month. Stella can look at it and say, okay, you guys can say, yeah, we agree with that. Then you will have a conversation and it'll provide, allow Stella and her staff to go back and get information on bullying. Because you can have the conversation about, what do you want to know about bullying? I want to know our suspension rate. I want to know, is there an opportunity for kids to uh, report it anonymously? I want to know this. You have that conversation here, because it's the only place you can have it. Everybody hears it. Now she can direct staff to say, okay, here's what the board wants. I'm going to have you do this part of the report. I need you to get me this information. And it's done. But then there's times when you're a board president and you're in between meetings yeah. and those items that you may uh, have had the opportunity to mention at the meeting. So when you're board president and you're creating the, doc, the um, agenda, there are times that there are items that are going to be placed on, but that's between the board and the, the board president and the superintendent. And then that's where I feel the, the superintendent will need to go and report to, you know, in his weekly correspondence, hey, this is, you know, coming up. And then that's how well, there's no secrecy. That's able that, that that takes care of that. But going back to this. So here's gonna end up happening tonight. Problem. So I'll be it's honest with you. Problem. You're gonna end up voting on it. Voting on what? So you're gonna make a motion to change the, the the language. And then the rest of the group has to vote. But it's mm -hmm. not an action item. Okay, or or you we have can't, to, can't uh, that's that. true, you're right, you're 100 percent right. <laughs> Going back to your body, like, uh, nice call. Yep. Nice call I think also but but you can't make that change by yourself. Of course not. And so you but still again I can't 
But you, but you can I recommend can't it. Support this. You can recommend it. It doesn't get changed. I, I've been to bid well, Right, right. Uh, and, and, and when we say support, that goes back to what we were talking about earlier. And that is, as a group, you make a decision. You lost because they went 4 1, 3 2. And to Andy's, I went out. I, when you're talking out in the community, it was 4 to 1. I was the one I voted uh, not to have it for, but the board voted for it. And so, therefore, I'm going to support it, and, and I'm still going to. I'm, I may still bring your your issue forward, you know, in, in some other format. So, we, how, how do we move forward with this one? one Jennifer wants this. Just to give another example, like we were talking, Andrew and Robson about science fiction and stuff too. Yeah. And one of the powers of doing it when you do it as a board too is that, like I mentioned, you, you could kind of work together on refining what the vision is for the, you know, what is it that you want from it. Mm -hmm. Remember, you have. I was doing it like it, it reminded me of because I had for like science fiction versus you know STEM label. Mm -hmm. okay. It's an opportunity for the board actually to help. That's the time to do it. You know, that's the time when you're you're actually um, yep. hopefully deliberating together. You know, yes. working it and actually making a better um, better ask. Yeah, the better we deliberate, even if we disagree about stuff. This is going to be the best. Makes sense. So, what you want to do? You guys talk amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. Jennifer is recommending. I, is another thing, another option too is we've all signed this document, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. But so, we haven't voted on it yet, so it's not. Okay. It hasn't been made official. So, I also think this is an opportunity to gather some more data. CSBA, your contacts. We don't have an update. I mean, who, who else would who else would sign this back page? What are the districts? Well, what more data do you need to see if other boards do the same thing we do? I mean, I don't at the end, know. At I the end of the day, yeah. you do not want to be able to speak at the meeting. That's what it is. Or, 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 or at the end of the day, Andy, do you That's want, let's say, John board president, and you want an item on the agenda, and you don't have the consensus of the board? Yeah. Or the board president says, you know what, Andy? Sorry, no can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely don't want that to happen. Andy, so that's what it is. I didn't do that with President Jennifer didn't do it, but it's happened in the past. And I can assure you it will happen again. And you need I don't to think it's ever in a time no. when things were brought up in for the board to decide. So so let me understand this. So so, so just a little history so. here for me. So right. people said, I want to agendize a topic mm -hmm. at a board meeting. At a board meeting. At a future board meeting. future. And then it was Voted on and shot down. Was it voted on? Yeah, one was voted on. Huh? No, it was a vote. Yeah, it wasn't voted on. That's the issue, Andy. It wasn't voted on. But we don't need to vote on this, so my thing. But I just want to understand from that from these four. Right. So when when that's why this is brought up, what happened? Did 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 the five of them vote say we don't want that on the Sorry, There's been a lot of issue. I'm talking you know, when I was on the board in the past, and that things have changed dramatically since I've been on the board and Jennifer and Pat. Things changed, but in the past it wasn't like that. I bring up an example when Kevin was the president. I wanted to talk about all our properties, and Kevin told me no, and that was the end of it. But I'm sure I you don't know, know Kevin. You didn't take me seriously. No, but, but yeah, well, but, but then again, of course, Stella brought it up, and Cheryl, and there we are on the agenda. So I would never say that we could never talk about property. All I'm saying is that so I'm like I don't have is why don't you talk about our properties? All I'm, saying, like, guys, all I'm saying is that it has happened <laughs> and we need to prevent it from happening in the future. If a board member wants an item to be put on a future agenda item, whether it's the following meeting or the one after or two after that, no board member should you, there's no need for the board to have a consensus. Whether if it's important to you, mm -hmm. it should be important to me. And from Henry and Kevin, what's the resistance on, on your end for that approach? I think we could take a little pause because we've had two, two people to step out. Yep. Oh, okay. Should we just take a quick like, five minute sure. break? Five sure. break. Uh -huh. Just make it fast because I have to go to yeah. the city. Okay. Yeah. Then we need to extend the meeting since it ends at 9 30. 9.15. Well, it was start ending at 9.30. 9, it says on the agenda.
Can we do 9.15? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Make a motion to extend the meeting an additional 15 minutes. Possibly posted in May. We should have brought this earlier in the meeting. I. Right? No. Um, it's a living document. I understand. It's not living yet until, yeah. uh, until we approve it. We were on the committee. We brought this up. I understand. But we, we haven't voted on it yet. Yeah, we actually have. Yes, oh, we, we have actually did vote on it. Yeah, we all signed it. I think I attended that meeting. It's September. September. I attended that meeting. Uh, oh, then, we, then good thing we're bringing it back up. Because the business can change. <coughs> we're amending it, I guess. <coughs> and then we need to bring it back to a future board meeting and amend it. So I think we well, have think to right? we have to get a consensus in here about whether or not the we need to board amend wants to amend vote. this mm -hmm. and then bring it back and then and then make the corrections and sign it and then take it back to the board. What happens if board members can sign? Oh, hold on. We're at least we're taking a break. I'm gonna call my daughter. Board, we're back out. Yeah. I'm sorry. Wait a second. Okay. Do we have a second to extend the meeting to nine? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Need a motion. I'll sign it. All in favor. Aye. Aye. FYI, I'm recording and I'm not going to pause it just to keep, um, just so you're aware. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, they play. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We don't say hi to the We just fly. Yeah, we can. Will be. What? You like that? Yeah. That's funny. Are you like Stephen Holbrook? No, no. I just. Um, yeah, there was a tie. Oh, you already saw it. I know they were. Well, this I was telling Lisa they gave them to go to the bleachers, two dollars. Yes. Oh yeah. Now the bleachers are. I know. They're Fifty bucks. Yeah, goes with it. Right, right exactly. But you that. can't go and not have a beer. Right, right. right. Exactly. You're on camera. <laughs> Didn't hear that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, she's very excited. Yeah. Yeah. She talked to Eric this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you're looking at the yeah. 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 It's like going to the Super Bowl. It is. Uh, there was a motion to extend the meeting, and we need your vote to so nine to ten. Yeah. Okay. We all. Are you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the whole thing about equity right. between do donations. Right. The board didn't try to keep that off the agenda. They basically said, hey, Kate, come and make a presentation. Yeah, especially if you know one of the young people, right? You know, yeah. where there's a difference between putting it on and making staff do any work about it. You can just say, okay, we can fit it in on this meeting, you can come tell us what you're talking about, and then if the board then sees something. It's kind of if, it, if we're all just kind of adults. But, but no, it's not a, it's not a consensus thing in terms of the bear getting it on the agenda. Having had a history yes. of a 10-year period of crazy agenda items getting on no, and see, the, and, well, well, see, well, see, the thing is also but without without any guidelines. Well, we we back in session now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, ready? Okay, we got, got a history of a lot of things. <laughs> that wasn't really one of them. Yeah. 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 the second time. So, all right. I have a, I have a couple of questions for everybody. So, just to reiterate. In the past, have there been crazy agenda, basket weaving, or something else mm -hmm. getting on the agenda? Have we had? Well, have we had? Well, anything get brought up as a crazy idea? Have we had structure in the past, or is this yes. an open? I don't think. We've, we've, yes. You had structure as yes. You know, is it board policies? If you look at it in terms of what this place agenda items, is in the purview of what the responsibility of the board. So that's oh, what wow. it was that's before. Right. And in, in the board policy, key, it also the key states word too. here is purview and responsibility right. of the board. Right. I think that's what I'm hearing you guys talk about. And that's really broad. Yeah. yeah. And it is pretty broad. So yeah, it's not down to how the district runs. But the reason why I'm cautious about this vote is because I don't want any unintended consequences, right? Where good ideas come up, but because the board says, no, that's not something that we're into, because we're all in our 80s. I mean, not, we're not in our 80s. You're in the 80s. You get my point. How are you How are you to that now? How are you moving to this? No, that's the point. People should Their grandkids have been done with the school district. But also within our board policies that any one board member can and may and should and will have an item on the agenda. This really is not as big of an issue. There's no I, I don't, I don't think is there. It can't because it, it There's can a list right here. Can, can you give can you just give an example of yeah, what exactly right you're talking, talking about that, that that we've had on the agenda? The the this is such a this has become such an issue for us. The board carries out some responsibilities. Right here. Would that be correct? So Jennifer, what do you want you want to right? make edits yeah. to this document and then vote on it? I think we need to bring it back and uh, Should we bring it back to the committee? We, we're going to need to. I think yeah. the committee should take a look at that. Yeah. 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 Let's okay. do that. Let's bring it back to the committee. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So well, I'll be here all night. So I will email Stella mm -hmm. the recommendations and suggesting that we yeah, and we sure. strike out certain yeah. sentences. Yep. Yeah. 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 Is that me? Right? Mm -hmm. All righty. And then we have page 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your trip Support visiting okay. schools, handling public and staff concerns. Mm -hmm. Bring up new ideas and agenda items. Okay. And I noticed on this agenda we don't have um, a place for future <laughs> talking about that future board agenda items. This is I, not a regular board. No, no I, I, I understand, but I, I wanted to. Um, uh, but we, I'm just saying, I, I think we'd be doing the things we should. And I have some comments too, and we don't have comments here. Okay, based on the times, you guys are okay? Yeah. We're, I think we can end it right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I, I'm just looking at so, the future we so, got like eight, nine, So in regards eight, to future uh, evaluation tools, um, and speaking with Luann Rivera, um, she suggested that the board attend CSBA because she's facilitating a workshop on evaluation tools, and maybe that's a good place where we can go. And then um, I know that Stella and I have reported information, so Stella can forward to the rest of the board that information from um, uh, How many of you are going to CSBA? Well, I want to go just for this one. <coughs> are. Yeah, okay. So we've sent information to the board regarding registration, so mm -hmm. just let Jennifer or Epiponis know if you'd like to attend. Okay. We don't have the schedule yet, so right. I don't know when right. things are scheduled. So um, so it's my recommendation. Right. And another thing that I had asked Luann Rivera was 
Um, so she has suggested that we do not do 360 for a lot of reason. Mm -hmm. um, and regarding to get to um, garner um, community input in regards to the evaluation um, process. So I guess we're gonna have to find another way to, to do just that. Um, and so I'm thinking that maybe uh, by attending this, I might be a copy yeah, that I can bring up and say, hey, how many of you actually do this? And if mm -hmm. you do, great, let mm -hmm. us know. Um, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's and if sure. you don't, why? Mm -hmm. I'd be interested, I would mm -hmm. want to know why um, uh, school districts don't. So um, so anyways, in regards to future agenda item, I just want to know, um, I'd like to just put it out there that I think we as a district, as a board, we really should um, look at the English language learner roadmap. And then I'm hoping to see at a future maybe special study session that we can have Nabila um, Masami, who's the EL coordinator for the County Office of Ed, and come and facilitate that for us. I really think we should look at that document. So that's what I wanted to say. Okay. I think the, um, that roadmap is featured by a lot of the CSP. Mm -hmm. It will be, mm -hmm. it will be, for sure. I like mm -hmm. to have it nice, mm -hmm. cozy section, a mm -hmm. session for us and also invite parents. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to attend CSU. No. Mm -hmm. So, as a board, you guys get make that decision. Right. In terms of, I'm just putting it out there. What the, yeah, what the, well, form, yeah, what the format yeah. to be. Yeah. And what the format to be with it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you to the public. Thank you to Ms. Um, Edelijas Picasso Martin for videotaping um, the live stream. Uh, live stream? It's Basically, I'm recording. Okay. Because my option would be to put this on YouTube. Okay. And then put it on Facebook. Okay. Also. Well, thank you so much for your and I volunteer. Have a fan out there that's and thank you to the audience, that community <laughs> members that came tonight. Thank you very much. And thank you to all of you, and especially to Mr. Eric Andrew for all your um, support and guidance. Guidance. I like you guys. It. Got me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. Yeah. So, anyways. Push the button, tell everybody. No, I don't have to. I get to pick and choose. That's we'll the, see you hey, John. 14. That's the beauty of, of being retired. <laughs> I get to pick and choose. There's